Good morning, everyone. Taikei ho taki. So thank you for uh, leading us to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, worship team. Thank you for our brother here, uh, who is the uh, younger version of Brother Jose. And, uh, but I will not say the better version, because I can see Elder Jose still playing the guitar at his age. I was so amazed how I wish that I, uh, when I get to 76, I can still strum my guitar. So you are an inspiration, uh, Brother Jose. Keep it up. You are a blessing to many people. So let's pray. Your grace is always sufficient for us. This day is beautiful not because of the sunshine, it's beautiful because of your amazing grace. So right now, we just come to you humbly asking you to speak to our hearts. As the song we sang a while ago, Speak, O Lord. We do not deserve anything from you. We're all sinners saved by grace. But we humbly ask you to give us grace through your word today. We praise you, Father. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So, Nehemiah is called to mission. in the Old Testament. We can find this uh, particular book. Very beautiful book. Very powerful. Short yet very powerful. Our key verse for this morning is Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Nehemiah said to the Israelites, Go, eat of the fat, drink of the sweet, send portions to him who has nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is a context? We always hear that. We always say this. In fact, we sing this in our praise and worship line. But many of us do not understand. The, the phrase, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What is the meaning? Okay, so let me just briefly explain it to you. When you love someone, okay, I'm sure we all love somebody here, right? Those who are in love, raise your hand. Very few. How about the married couples? You don't love your spouse anymore? No? How long have you been married? And speaking of that, I'm just sad to inform you. Last year, I was blessed to uh, bless a wedding of a British guy and a Filipino woman. That was just last year. And a few months ago, they were talking about divorce. And they asked me to also counsel them. I counseled them before they got married. Now, they want a divorce. They still want counseling. Okay? I felt so sad. I said, wala pa isang taon. Ya, bot si ni. So, be swalo. Okay, I'm see. What happened to the I do's a year ago? Di ba? Now, let me go back to the topic proper. When you love someone, you'll do anything to make that person happy. Amen? Gacho. Swiss yo. Okay? If you love someone, you'll, make, you'll do everything to make that person happy, right? And sometimes, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and even money. To make somebody happy, correct? Can it be very exhausting sometimes? Can it be very painful sometimes to love someone? Yes. But at the end of the day, when you see that person very happy, very joyful because of what you have done, your exhaustion, your tiredness will all go away. For all the parents here, okay, Jackson here has two children, and I was asking him a while ago, is it true? that grandchildren are better than your own children. Elder Jose, no? Hindi niya alam. No? I mean, because I, I, my, my young, my, my, one of my daughters would get married next year. So I was thinking, people are saying, oh, pastor, pag nagka-apo ka na, makakalimutan mo ang problema mo. Totoo ba yun? No? So I was asking Jackson, I me, yes, mas masaya ang may apo kesa sa mga anak. Bakit? Pag apo, nilalaro mo lang. Di ba? Pag may problema na, oh, anak, bantay mo na anak mo. Di ba? Ganun po yun, kaya masaya. 
If you see the one you love, okay, with all the effort you have done, you made that person happy, all your tiredness will go away. His joy becomes your strength. Is that right? Does it make sense? Wala na kausap, hello? Kaya po? If you, your, if, you, if you see your children happy because of your hard work, you earn honest income to give them a good future, the joy of your children becomes your strength. Huh? And the same is true with God. Can you tell me to be a Christian is not easy? Who will agree with me? Raise your hand. You are always under the spotlight. You will be criticized if you commit a mistake. Non-believers will always find fault in you. Ah, Christian ka pala, tingnan lang natin. Diba? They will pounce on you when you make a mistake. Living a Christian life is not easy. It's easy, easy to say I'm a Christian, but to live the life of a Christian is not a walk in the park. It's so difficult. Like what Jose had said, you have to deny yourself every day. Denying yourself is not easy. But once you're able to do that and you see the Lord happy, because you are following His will, then all your exhaustion disappears. The joy of God becomes your strength to continue living for His glory. Amen? That is very true. And that is what happened to Nehemiah. The context of chapter 8 was, he was about to finish his mission, his call to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. What were his mission in life? By the way, speaking of mission, you and I, we all have a mission. I like what our brother said a while ago. We all have a mission in life. Nang kagilang utsige uso siya, utsige purpose in life. Utsige bokpiao, why you were created by God. What were Nehemiah's mission? Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, restore worship of God in Jerusalem, the chosen city of God. Let me pause it for a while. I hope you're praying for the Middle East right now. Okay, we know what's happening. Israel, Hamas, Lebanon, Hasbala, and recently, Iran. Please do not be like, That's not true. If you have that kind of mindset, then you are not really a father of Jesus Christ. You have to be mindful of what's happening in the Middle East. And speaking of Iran, did you not know Iran will play a vital role in the last days? If you read the Old Testament, you will come across a nation called Persia. Persia is Iran today. Persia was a superpower before. We had many kings in Persia that God raised up to discipline Israel or even to help Israel in this context, okay? But in the last days, Persia or Iran will also play a major role in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. In what sense? Huh? In the book of Ezekiel, there's a prophecy about Gog of Magog, Persis, and other nations. The word Persis there actually in 38 of Ezekiel refers to Persia. Okay? Some countries will come together. No? Notably, Russia. Okay? That's already very obvious. Then Persia or Iran is one of the countries that will join forces and attack the city of God or the chosen nation of God, which is Israel. We pray and hope that this war will not end up in a nuclear warfare. Why? Iran has nuclear warfare. Israel has nuclear warfare also. Let's pray that this will not escalate. But then again, we don't know if this is God's will or not. We just have to be prepared and be ready. Whether you believe in pre, mid, or post, the important thing is you and I must be Prepare. Now, let's, let's see a uh, sample of the walls of Jerusalem. That is a, uh, a caricature of the walls of Jerusalem okay, at the time of Nehemiah. What kind of wall is this? Okay? The wall, according to the scripture, is uh, four kilometers long. Is it long or not? For a wall? Yes. I have not seen a wall that long. Okay? Not even the walls of Malacanang. Is four kilometers long, right? Very long, okay? I just want to give you an emphasis or an illustration of how big the mission of Nehemiah was. Secondly, its height is four-story high building. It's a building, 
我我不看佮唱我安尼个鬼啊，可能就是无安尼个鬼唱啊，就无安尼个好些。所以第一句话我是杂笑不？你莫莫打死你哦！旁边那一个安巴海那 four story high building， 古龙安样 ，prison OK， 没 barbed wire 吧 OK。你 imagine the wall is four forty feet high， and let's talk about the thickness， eight feet thick， 呀，板台高。八尺啊，伊个高度，三十四个 watchtower， seven main gates. You ask me, you 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 tell me right now, is this a major construction work? Would this be a major construction repair? Yes, super mega, you know,、um, construction repair. And who is Nehemiah? He is Nehemiah is not an engineer. He's not even a、uh, an architect. He's not even a contractor at the DPWH. He knows nothing about construction, and God plucked him out of obscurity, from the kingdom of the palace of the king of Persia, into Jerusalem, to rebuild the wall of、uh, Jerusalem. Why? Why is the wall so important? He gets chew. Why is it so important? He looks at them and chew. Why is it so important? It represents many, many things. Number one, it represents dignity. Do you know? A house without wall is not a house. Have you seen a house without wall? You by quantity, you 出来无边啵， by quantity 啵。我请恁去 Smoky Mountain， 我请去恁去 Bayacas， 我请去恁在某个 Squatter area。真想我，因为出来无边啊。你那无边啊，我自己出自己出无边啊，无 dignity 啊。感觉我说啊，唔正出，是 even like a house， 对不？ And sometimes I feel sorry. I feel bad because you know people who live in walled houses look down on people whose houses does not do not have walls. That is the sad reality.、Huh? No dignity, even in poverty. Recently, I think it was Neda who came up with a research study. Neda said, "For a meal of 21 pesos, you can survive the day." 21 pesos. Sir, let me ask you. Can you survive with a 21 peso meal? What can you buy with 21 peso? Rice, sure, Adoka. 56 pesos ng kilo ng rice niyon. Kaya to kalating kilo niyong abil ng ng 40, 21 pesos, di ba? And then the government is saying you can survive with 21 peso meal. Where's the dignity in that? I challenge them. Why don't you buy a meal for 21 peso and eat and tell me if you are gonna be happy with 21 peso meal? Don't you even believe when the government says, "Oh, statistics says there are less hungry people in the Philippines." To some extent, it's true because most of them are dead already because of hunger. That's why there are less hungry people. There's no dignity in being poor, and God doesn't want you to be poor. Now, don't get me wrong. As I'm a prosperity gospel teacher, no, God wants to bless us, and there's no dignity. In being poor, okay. Jerusalem without the wall is without dignity. To get two, two lai bo chu bo piao bo dignity. I'm sure all of us here in this church would not want to stay in a room or a house without wall. We want to have a wall. Why? The next portion is it's a it's a sign of protection. Kiam si bo gi nao chu gi nao piao. You feel secured, right? Can you sleep with your doors unlocked? When I go to bed, the first thing I do, I check all the doors. I check all the windows, no, and I try to turn off all the lights because of the Meralco bill. When I was younger, I cannot sleep if the lights are off. But now I'm older, I cannot sleep when the lights are on. Because the mahal ng kuryente. What we kung dito? Meralco bill? Why? I'm not like you. Kung kung si mo, nagbawas sila twenty nine cents per kilowatt, but they increased sa ako go ko per kilowatt. The wall of Jerusalem represents protection from enemies, from wild animals, from intruders, from conquerors, and what have you. Without the wall standing, Jerusalem is an open, open sub ob- object for, to attack. Kiam siibo. And lastly, I can also say the wall of Jerusalem represents salvation. Shongte kiun. In the Old Testament, we often hear this phrase, "Huh? May you protect me with your wall of salvation." Di e. Kiu un e pia, kiu un e chua. The walls of salvation protecting us. 
This is very, very true. Another example is in the book of Genesis. When Adam and Eve committed a sin against God, when they disobeyed God, they became naked. The Bible says they were naked. I was wondering, they were naked naman talaga eh. What do you mean by they were naked when they were already naked? <laughs> they were born you know, with their birthday suit on, so to speak. Then I realized, if you commit a sin, if you disobey God, the wall of protection disappears. God's protection disappears. And we know the history of Israel. Israel is like a roller coaster. They obey God, they sin against God, they obey God, they sin against God. And when they disobey God, God will discipline them. In this case, the Babylonians or the Iraqis of today, all right? They conquered Israel. Destroyed the wall, the temple, and what have you, okay? And it remains in ruins. No wall, no dignity, no protection, no salvation. Of course, no salvation, no peace of mind. Knowing that when you die, you don't know where you're going. Have you ever asked yourself that question? When I die, it's not even a question of if, it's a question of when. When you die, do you know where you're going? If you know you're going to be with God, you have peace of mind. Boy, how can you But sometimes, you know, we believe here, but we do not believe here. Okay? But if you really believe in your heart, then that is not an issue. That is not the end. That is a beginning of something beautiful. Now, who is Nehemiah? In that context, he was the chief cupbearer cup of king of Persia, Arthur Sexus the first. Cupbearer is an easier, pang tsuya, pang chai. And maybe he's also the food taster. Okay? Why food taster? So his work is not really easy, huh? Chief cup bearer. Huh? And he was a very devout and patriotic Jew or Israelite. I think I should change that name. It should not be called a Jew. A Jew was a modern way of calling them. In their times, they're not called Jew. They're called Israelites. Okay? He's a devout Israelite. No? It's in kya kok, ya ai kok. You know, problems with many Christians today, we are not patriotic. You ask yourself a question. Are you a patriotic person here in the Philippines where you are staying? Whether you are a Filipino or Filipino Chinese or a national Chinese like me, I don't care. Do you love your country? The evidence is simple. Do you follow the law of the country? If you don't, then you're not patriotic enough. But Nehemiah was very patriotic. I hope that we become like him. No? God, uh, very patriotic. Filipinos. Kahit na ikaw ay lumaki sa farm o hindi. No? Kahit na ikaw may, may, may pogo or may hindi ka sa iklog ng pogo or whatever. Okay? I hope you love your country. Nehemiah was a godly man. It's in kya siyong te. It's in kya tsu. And besides, did you, did you not know his name was not an accident? The name Nehemiah actually means God comforts. So for those who are still praying for a child, when you, you know, uh, have a baby boy, name him Nehemiah. God who comforts. And what is the main mission of Nehemiah? Rebuilder of the walls and restorer of worship in Jerusalem. Re remember, the wall symbolizes salvation also. In some ways, we are all like Nehemiah. There are many people outside this wall who does not have Jesus in their hearts. In the Philippines alone, Philippines pride itself to be the only Christian nation in Asia, sabi nila. More, more or less 90% are Roman Catholics. But you ask them regarding salvation, they cannot tell you for sure that they are saved. They're only Christians by name, nominal Christians, but not by heart. There are many people outside this wall who do not have the wall of salvation. See, that is also our mission. Go and make disciples 
of all nations. And by the way, Matthew 28, 18 to 20 has not changed. It remains the call of God. And what's the call of God? Make disciples of all nations. No? Baptizing them in the name of the Lord, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them about everything God has, has, uh, has taught us. Okay? And then the end will come. That is your call and my call. I always say this. We are all missionaries. Every person. I, I read this somewhere a long time ago. A person with Christ is a missionary. A person without Christ is a mission field. mission field. We are all missionaries, by, by the way. Whether you agree or not, that's your problem, okay? Number one truth, I want to tell you. The call for mission. Is that true? When Jesus ascended to heaven, before he ascended to heaven, he was talking to his disciples. Go and make disciples of all nations. He was talking to his disciples. Are we his disciples? Raise your hand if you are. We are all his disciples. Follower. This is the disciple. And when Jesus gave the command, the great commission, and not the great omission, as many churches are doing, then this call is for you also. Like the call of Nehemiah. What was the call to Nehemiah? One day, somebody from Jerusalem went to Persia and said to Nehemiah, Nehemiah, the walls remain in ruins. The temple, there's no worship whatsoever. We are not protected. Nehemiah, upon hearing the sad news, Broke down in tears. He said, Oh, my nation. Guay coca, guay coca. Huh? He prayed to God. Shongtea, shongtea. Dimbino kya kito. This so swan kya ke coca is in ruins. Please send me to restore or repair the wall of Jerusalem. Have you ever prayed a prayer for the Philippines? With all the political, whatever happening right now, with all the expose in the, oh, by the way, you know what? I look forward to every Senate and Congress hearing right now. Kaya the 14 hours, wow, Jin Ho Ko. Be Netflix a Ho Ko. There are many revelations right now. So sad, no? Are you happy with what's happening in your country? I hope you're not. I hope you pray for the Philippines because you're here in the Philippines for a reason. Although you may be a Chinese, but God brought you here for a reason. Pray for the Philippines. Pray for the politicians. Pray for our future. Nehemiah heard about the plight of, of his people. He cried. He broke down in tears. And he was saying, God, please do something about it. Now, some people tell me, I don't have a call for mission. I don't think that is accurate. I heard this from an American preacher many years ago. He came to the Philippines. His ministry is to the street, street people. He said, if there's a need, then there's a call. Would you agree? Does it make sense? Do you see a need outside of this building? Do you? Unless you are manhid. Then Hokkien was say, when you are manhid, you don't feel anything. And many Christians are manhid today. They don't feel anything. They see the poor, they don't do anything about it. They see the unsaved, they're not even convicted to pray for that unsaved person. I tell you, if there's a need, and there will always be a need, then there is a call. The only question is, will you respond? God is calling people to become his followers. That's his heartbeat. God is calling people to come to know Jesus as his Lord and Savior. 
That is his heartbeat before and even now. The other question is, will you respond? You think I was a young day? Take and go to Waki, Jerusalem, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. If there's a call, there is a need. Secondly, Nehemiah began to pray for his nation. I mentioned this a while ago. You have to pray for the Philippines or you have to pray for China. If you are very, very an ardent, you know, uh, uh, citizen of China, you love China so much, you pray for China. I have a small group every Thursday, mostly senior citizens. I'm the only non senior. Pero malapit na rin. I'm four years away from being a senior citizen. I don't know if I'm going to be happy. No? Siguro on one side, happy because of the 20% discount. And no more long lines. <laughs> Praise God. Then they found out sa Mercury, mas mahaba ang pila ng senior at PWD kesa sa regular line. So doon na ako sa regular line. <laughs> Di ba? Mas mahaba ang pila doon. Mas matagal pa kasi mabagal magsalita ang mga senior. Nakakalimutan pa. Ano bang gamot yun? Ah, ah, I cannot remember. Di ba? So mas mahaba ang pila doon. Doon ka lang sa regular line. Okay? I'm four years away from being a senior. Yung group namin every Thursday, pa siya may sa aking panong kasi and I noticed many of them, they are really pro-China. Pag pinag-usapan namin West Philippine Sea, naku, mag-aaway yan. Pro-China, pro-Taiwan, wang kechite. If you are pro-China, are you praying for China? Most of them would say, oh, China, chin huat tat. Kyong santong chin ho. Eh, hindi mo si kitok to ha. Why are you praising communism? Communism is a godless ideology. There's no God in communism. Who is God? Men. Xi Jinping is God. They praise Xi Jinping to the highest heavens. And I only wonder, are these people really Christians? I say, okay, no problem with China being prosperous. Pray for their souls. Because financial prosperity does not equate to spiritual prosperity. Pray that they will be saved. Pray for the nation. Are you praying for the nations? Are you praying for the Philippines? Nehemiah interceded for his nation. He cried. You know the word intercede means you stand in the gap. Between God and sinners, you stand in the gap. And say, God, like lang, lang. When was the last time we prayed for the Philippines? When was the last time we prayed for India? When was the last time we prayed for Ukraine? Well, by the way, in Ukraine, there are many, many Christians. And speaking of Iran, there's also a revival happening in Iran right now. Many Christians now in Iran. When was the last time we prayed for a country? Pray. Nehemiah prayed for the nation. And we all know the power of prayer. We can never, never negate or look down on the power of prayer. Somebody said, when we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. Because when you pray, you're saying, God, I can't do this, but you can. You're the Almighty God. So when you pray, you're connecting to the source of all power. And what you cannot do, He can. What is impossible to you is possible to him. So we pray. We pray for the nations. We pray for the salvation of a neighbor, of a family member, of a co-worker, of a business partner. We pray. And it's a call of God for all of us. How do you participate in mission? You pray for the nations. You pray for the Muslims. You pray for the Hindus. You know, last night, my wife and I were watching a Hotel Mumbai. Have you watched the movie Hotel Mumbai? You know, I tell you, during the pandemic, na a lockdown tayo, di ba? na ko lahat na nasa Netflix. Even Koreans, na ayaw na ayaw ko, na panood ng Korean. Ah, kamsaham nita, samgip salamat, kimbap, bibimbap, bulgogi. You know? I watch all the films. And last night, we were watching Hotel Mumbai. Wow, very beautiful movie. Extremists from Pakistan attacked this hotel in Mumbai, or used to be Bombay. Kaya po may kinakawag na Mumbai. Kaya mo siya, why si Ann Mumbai kailan? 
They hijacked the hotel. They killed so many people because of what? Religion. In the name of Allah, Allahu Akbar, is what these Muslim people would say. Have you been praying for them? Before you condemn them, are you even praying for them? And India, most is Hindu, but there are also Muslims in India today. And by the way, India is the biggest country in the world today with more than 1.5 billion people today. It has surpassed China for several years now. Have you been praying for the nation? I beg you to pray because that is a command of God. You know what? In the temple of Jesus, God in, in Jerusalem, there are three, three partitions in the temple. The most holy place, the holy place, and the outer court. What is the outer, outer court for? It is a place for prayer for all the nations. Remember Jesus entering the temple? What happened to the outer court? The people made it into a palenque, selling of animals for sacrifice, money changing, etc. For those who came from other countries wanting to join the pilgrimage. And what did Jesus do? He overturned all the tables. He even used a whip. And he said, my father's house is a house of prayer for all nations. You made it into the ten of thieves. Naging isang lugar na mamaganakaw. He was so angry. There's no more place for prayer for the nations. Imagine how important it is in the heart of God for you and I to pray for the Gentiles, for those who do not know God yet. Pray as Nehemiah did. Thirdly, this is what happened to Nehemiah. He knows his task is too big. Four kilometers long, four story high, eight feet thick. I cannot do this alone. I cannot. I need partners. You know, in missions, you, you can't do it alone. My family and I went to Xinjiang, China, year 2000 to 2005. On our own, we cannot survive in China. The church we serve in Laguna, San Pedro Laguna, is only giving us $100 a month allowance. Hindi kami makakabot ng China, yung 5,000 pesos, hanggang aparihol, apari lang kami noon. From apari, magbabangka na kami. No? All the way to Sinkyong. Diyan, Sinkyong duwahang mo, ah. You know, say, huwiki ki, eh, mong lah. Ah, say, ki keng chiu, oh. Sa chuan ng huwiki, oh, ki Sinkyong. Sabag to, laksyo, siya. Six hours trip by plane. That's far. Okay? How can we go to Xinjiang with only 5,000 pesos as allowance? What we did was, like what Nehemiah did, he mobilized for partners. The first person he approached was whom? He approached the king. You know, when you, when, you, when you mobilize for missions, you need to pray for people who have the capacity to be your partner. In missions, we have prayers, we have senders, diba? and we have goers. If you are called to be a sender, you have, you have to have the capacity. And Nehemiah knew that very well. Who else should I approach but the king? Aside from the fact the king was his employer, he also knew the king has the power, the authority, and the resources to help him rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. You know, the Bible is very clear. God can use even the wealth of the unrighteous for the righteous. That's biblical. He can use the wealth of those who do not believe in God and to help fulfill the purposes of God. Like when the temple was built, God used the kings of other countries, the wood of Lebanon, the cedars of Lebanon, all this, this wealth of the world, God can use it because in the first place, it's all God's. He owns everything, by the way. Nehemiah knew that. He approached the king. He said, oh, king. Or before he approached the king, his face was downcast. It's in Mantai, it's in Mantai, it's in The king saw it. Nehemiah, what's wrong with you? Oh, by the way, I, I read somewhere, if you are talking to the king, you can never come to the king with a downcast face. He will say, are you not happy with my rulership? I'll have you beheaded. But Nehemiah cannot, cannot contain the grief anymore. He was so grief-stricken. He faced the king and, and he was so sad. And the king said, Hey, what happened to you? Like, ah, we're going Mrs. Mo Agabe. Did you have an LQ with your wife? And Nehemiah was like, Oh no, the king noticed. And he, the Bible says he prayed before he talked to the king. And he said, Oh king, 
my country remains in ruin. Why coca, huh? Poor sweet. Chew poor. When the temple can poor, the humble. I need help. In other words, Nehemiah actually applied for a uh, sick leave or vacation leave. Can you let me go home to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? Imagine if you're Nehemiah, you may be thinking, Suntok Sabwanto. This is a very impossible task. The king of Persia, they were our enemies. In some ways, they also helped destroy my country. Would they also help rebuild the country? Well, of course, it depends on the king, like King Cyrus, who was very uh, instrumental in the returning of the exiles to, to Israel. But not all the kings are the same. But Nehemiah had faith in God. He spoke to a pagan king, and God intervened. The king did not only allow Nehemiah to go back. He gave Nehemiah, you know, letter of authority, materials to rebuild the wall, and even workers. Go, Nehemiah. Rebuild, okay, the walls of your country, of your city. And Nehemiah was able to go. In mission work, we need partners. In the mission agency I'm heading, my main work as a director is to raise support for our missionaries. We have over 16 missionaries in Asia right now. We're expanding to South Asia. Cambodia and Indonesia are in our, in our hearts right now. Why are we doing this when there are also mission work in the Philippines? I believe in the calling, specific calling of every person. In our case, that's our calling. Entire Asia. Why? Asia has many unreached people. Asia has many unbelievers. We're all the largest religious bloc in this region. We need all the help we can to be able to share the gospel to every Hindu, every Buddhist, every uh, uh, Muslim, every atheist in the largest continent of the world, Asia. Nehemiah didn't do it alone. He raised supporters, including the king of Persia, Artaxerxes I. We need partners. I believe in strategic partnership. Even in church, one pastor cannot do it alone. The pastors must have help from all the lay leaders for the church to be able to function, the function that God wants them to do. Number four, there were so many oppos oppositions. Nehemiah faced a lot of opposition. Sometimes, not just sometimes, most of the time in missions, we also face opposition. Especially if you're doing God's work. When you're doing God's will, your number one opposition is the enemy, Satan. And he will raise up people to go against you. I remember when we were in Xinjiang, we were housed, I was, in, I was a foreign student, okay, what's this again? Liu Xiansheng. My wife was an English teacher. So the school that she worked at housed us in a building full of retired teachers. Tui Xiu, Te Hiu E Xian Si. Siyempre, pag Te Hiu, puro may edad na yan. Ketsu Ehe, Kiam Si. We were put on the second floor. On the ground floor was an old lady, maybe 70 plus years old, no? retired teacher. We were on the second floor, just on top of her apartment. And I had four children. At that time, my eldest was nine, my second was seven, then four and three. And those who have children that age, those ages, you know what I'm saying. Magugulian, si mantay gieta kaya mo si mo. What si ka si si ngao pi 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 a? Sabi ko sa mga napinigmana, yun ba na makis Spiderman pinigdihin ng asa ko yun? Oo, we kaya ti ti kap tuwe ti panting chao na chao ki aduan no, kui chula si tinduan. Yung kaya na kaya ki ato energy, okay? Eh, nasa baba namin, matanda, na-retiree. Siyempre, dog, 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 di ba? I-ay, yachin, ha? I-ay kung si, no? Yaho si, kasi, gun yacha. Ikak may kilay, gun pangin, eh, magun. Ha? He was, she was called us. Ngayaw, kao ching cha. Magsusimbo ko sa polis. Ako, wag, wag. Missionary ko ba, mag-deport kami. Ngayon, sibo. You know, most of the time, I have to beg for her mercy. Eh, uh, and she was always mad. She was like, I feel like, oh, this is one of her opposition. Okay? I told my children, oh, please be careful. Be And how can you contain four children? 
no, who are like, you know, Spider-Man, Superman, and, and Iron Man. No, they're so magulo talaga. Sometimes I would say, oh, kung nakiyan ka ng tipto, no, eh? Oh, man ba na? Kasi chapang, chapang itiyaki, kaya mo sabi mo, kaya imang tua, kaya kakilay. And we became paranoid. So we would pray, Lord, please help us. Well, we face a lot of, you know, opposition in our work in China. You know what? God answers prayers. Then one day, I, was I, I received another doorbell. And I'm sure, ah, galing naman kay ama yan, sigurado. When I opened the door, I was about to apologize. Oh, katsin sa ile, oh. Po hao isu, yan liang woman. But this time, different siya. No? Medyo yung mukha niya, hindi galit. Hindi magkadikit yung dalawang kilay. Wala siyang flyover dito sa kilay niya. Nakangiti siya. Yung sa kongose, uh, marunong ka bang mag-ayos ng kuryente? Ni hao siu di tian mo eh. Kongose ka na siya. Eh, wai tian pai, ni ko abot eh. Oh boy, I'm back here. You want to study? Oh, it's way. Oh, anytime. Why are you all looking at study, study? I'm back here like you. Then what's up? I'm going to see. You know, I say, hey, good news, good news. Ama boma na nakinadit. Ikio wa to kit song ikpian na. What's it? What's up? I say, ah, I know, Papa. Next time, what this is what we should pray. We pray for more appliances to be destroyed, so that Ama will call you to help, and they will not. She will not scold us anymore. That's one way of dealing with the opposition. In mission, you face all kinds of opposition. We have the extremists. We have those who are hardened, uh, anti, you know, Bible, anti Christ. There are so many things you have to consider. Nehemiah faced all kinds of opposition. We have Sanbalat, Tobiah, and all those people who oppose the rebuilding of the wall. They oppose people. Okay, salvation coming to them. But Nehemiah stood firm. He did not allow this opposition to destroy his vision of bringing, you know, restoring worship and rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. I hope I have more time, but I will skip some of this. So what happened? Nehemiah went to Israel with this ragtag team of construction workers. Now, they work round the clock amidst opposition, amidst all those taunting words, threats, death threats even. And you know what? With God's grace, they were able to rebuild the wall. How many of you here know how long it took them to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem? Any ideas? Some are still thinking. Nabasa ko yun eh. Nabasa ko yun eh. Sa Facebook kaya tayo na sa Facebook. Nasa hindi nasa Instagram yun. Nasa Indra, nasa Instagram una hito yun eh. Hindi. Na net sa Netflix sa panu kasi Netflix yun. A construction project four kilometers long. You know in the Philippines. I'm just so curious about the Philippines. Yung Skyway natin. Kaya napa sinimulan yun. Hanggang ngayon di pa rin tapos. De ba yung MRT natin? Kailan pa sinimulan yan? Hindi pa rin kapos. Ah, wow! Construction work in the Philippines will take an eternity to finish. Well, you know, Nehemiah rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in just 52 record-breaking days. I was so amazed when I found this out many years ago. Wow! God is amazing. God is almighty. God is so powerful. What man cannot do, he can. What you and I cannot accomplish, with God's help, we can accomplish. 52 days. Nehemiah should ought to consider a construction business. He must be a contractor. And all the buildings, you know, in no time at all, will be finished. In 52 days, the walls of Jerusalem were established. In 52 days, people who you know, do not have protection, dignity, and salvation receive it because of the wall symbolizing that. In 52 days, Nehemiah was able to restore worship. What has worship got to do with the walls of Jerusalem? 
people who do not know God do not worship God, right? But if that person becomes a Christian, the walls of salvation is now erected, then naturally, worship will be restored. That is the significance of the wall of Jerusalem in the context of Nehemiah. God called him to rebuild the walls because God wants worship to be restored. In the world that we live in, out of the 8 billion people, only a few worship God. The world that we live in has no walls anymore. The Bible says, the king of this world, the prince of this world, referring to Satan, is reigning today. And that's why many people do not believe in Jesus. They do not worship because they do not believe. Somebody once said, the reason why mission exists is because worship does not exist. That's why we have mission. You know, in China, I realized way back in the 2000s, the soft drinks brand, Coca-Cola, is more popular than Jesus Christ. You as a Chinese, they don't know Jesus. They tell you, oh, Qi Tu Jiao is a white man's religion. I have a lola. A policeman. But the policeman became a Christian, which is not allowed in China. So I was invited to the house. I shared to the lola. Lola, oh, she told me, point black, oh, Jesus is a Did you realize that? Buddha was not born in Fujian, Shaman. Okay? He was not born in, in Beijing. Buddha was born in India. To be specific, he was born in Nepal. There's a place in Nepal that's the birthplace of Gautama Buddha. You have to tell them about Jesus. In 52 days, Nehemiah finished the wall of Jerusalem. And accordingly, 43,000 people from exile returned to Jerusalem. Wow! What a powerful experience. They were experiencing a homecoming. They were returning to the city of God. The, God, the, the city that God has chosen. 43,000 from exile. How many long? How many years were there in exile? 70 long years. How many years since Jesus ascended to heaven? Up to now, more than 2,000 years. And yet, there are very few people coming home or coming back to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? The church is not doing the job. The church is sleeping on her job. We're not doing missions at all. The rebuilding and dedication of the walls happened in the time of Nehemiah. Revival and restoration of worship experienced by the people of Israel. And who is the happiest? The Bible says, for one soul to be saved, millions of angels rejoice in heaven. Did you not know that? I'm so happy I will cry. For a soul to be saved. Imagine the joy in the heart of our God in heaven. You ask the question, what is most important to God? It was so important. You and I so important. He gave up his son on the cross. Can there be a more important thing in the eyes of God? God did not give Jesus for the material things of the world. He gave Jesus for you and me. And to him, that is the most precious thing ever in this life. And just imagine the joy of the Lord when you bring somebody to him. When he shared the gospel to, to a Muslim and that Muslim became a Christian. The joy of the Lord. 
that becomes our strength in doing mission work. I have a testimony to share in China. I don't know if I've shared this before. If I did, please pretend to have not heard it, okay? So you won't, you know, miss the, uh, this uh, excitement. I have this Muslim guy in Xinjiang. His name is Muhammad, and he's a boxer. But he's not related to Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Praise God. So I was very careful with him when he shared the gospel because I might get an uppercut or a, uh, you know, haymaker. <laughs> His name is Muhammad, and he's a Muslim. He's a student in a university. I, you know, meet him like once a week. I would teach him English. He'll teach me the Uyghur language, Allah Pek language, Arabic. And over the span of a year and a half time, I would share Jesus to him. And he would always say, no, Isa al-Masih, Jesus Christ is just a prophet. No more than that. But I was very patient. It's okay. I'm not forcing religion down your throat. Just let me share to you Jesus, my Savior. So one day, his, well, his birthday came. So I said, Muhammad, let's go out and eat. Kaya ako. Okay. What's yadi? Na na kitya. Sitong. Un sa akit sige, a hotel, buffet, eat all you can. Wow. Kagilang chan huwahin na eat all you can. Kaya un siyogi hilo ko, cannot be contained. Wow, buffet. And of course, eat all you can, but even drinks, drink all you can, especially coffee. No? So, get kuya, mo kao sabi ka, mo gimi a tui pwe kape. Di ma kao a misa wui kun dik na. Go tiam no, bak chui ao kuya to a dui. A tui kape, no to wui kun dik na. Okay? 5 a.m., I was like, wow, man, let, Lord, let me sleep. No? Flush all the caffeine out of my system. I cannot sleep that night. When I was able to doze off for a few hours, Okay, I did not know Muhammad cannot sleep also. <laughs> no? He was also experiencing a caffeine, you know, charge evening. And around 7 30 in the morning, my phone rang. It was Muhammad. He said, Eugene, can I go to your place? I said, More coffee. Hey <laughs> Oh really? Pero Eugene, make a sa yo. When I doze off, I had a dream. I cannot understand. Can you explain? Come, come, come to my place. He came to my place. We sat down. I didn't offer him coffee. <laughs> that was morning already. We had coffee for a month already, supply in our system. What was your dream all about? He said, Eugene, I was in a field. So, it's a field. What did you get? In the middle of the field was a fence. There was a fence. I was on the other side where the grass are all dried up. Parched land. No green things. Then I look up on the other side of the fence. It's all green. And I saw you over the other side of the fence. I was tempted to ask him, do I look good in your dream? Huh? What's I your oh, Am I photogenic? And he said, I saw sheep following you. Then I heard a voice from out of nowhere. The voice said this, Do you want to know the truth? Follow that man. Then he walked up. And he said, What is truth? Like Pontius Pilate. When he asked Jesus, What is truth? And he said, Eugene, you have to explain to me. What is the truth? I said, Muhammad, I've been telling you all these years. The truth is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yasu sisya, no, is it tolo, cindi, simia. You cannot come to God. Whether you call him Allah or Yahweh, you cannot go to him except through Jesus Christ. And that morning, with our eyes wide awake, Muhammad knelt down and surrendered his life to the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ. He became a follower of Jesus Christ. I was in tears. I was crying when we were praying to receive. He was praying to receive Jesus. I was just crying and crying. But I believe with all my heart, 
the father was also in tears. He was saying, that's my son. He's my son. He's coming home. He's coming home. The walls are being restored. Worship is being restored in the heart of a Muslim man named Muhammad. And there are many other stories like that, I tell you. All the pains, all the efforts, all the hardship in Xinjiang paid off. You know why? The joy of the Lord became my strength. Mo kwan tukyo piak piak persecution. Mo kwan tukyo kangko tongko muyao kina. Hua kyo shongke sin hua hi. Iye hi lok si guai lat diong. The joy of Jesus became my strength. I hope that will also be your strength. In your mission in life, which is to bring more souls to Jesus, I hope God's joy becomes your strength. And it will fuel you, energize you to win more for His name, Jesus. That is a call of Nehemiah. And that is also your call and my call. We are called to rebuild walls. We are called to bring people to the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our calling. Every Christian must be a missionary. You're not just called to warm the seats here every Sunday. No. If that is your view of Christianity, you really did not comprehend what Christianity is all about. The word Christian actually means legal Christ. We are legal Christ, legal Christos in Greek. And what, that, what did Jesus do? He died for us. What should you and I do? We should die for the people also. Bring them. And sometimes it can cause your death. Great missionaries like Jim Elliot, Hudson Taylor, David Livingstone, Adoniram Hudson, and many more. We should die. May not be physically. Denying yourself, Hosea means you die to yourself, your ambition, your, your whatever is your interest in life. And you say, Lord, I'm dead to myself. I'm now alive. Galatians 2.20. Paul says here, I do not live anymore. I am dead in Christ. The life I live today, I live for His glory alone. That is the essence of Christianity. You're not living for yourself only. You're living for Him. And it's not easy, it's difficult, painful. You know, William Carey from England went to India. He lost his family in India. His son, his wife became insane. William Carey suffered so much in India. He almost went depressed. Lord, did you really call me to India? My wife became crazy. My son died of sickness. Is this the call you've given me? He did not give up. He went on to stay in India until his death. And today, the reason why there are many Christians in India is because of the life of one man. The sacrifices of, Dave, uh, of William Carey. That's why today there's Christianity in India because of one man. Your call and my call is to bring more people to Jesus. I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes. Will you please? And please reflect deeply. Praying that this will not just be another Sunday sermon. You're not here to be entertained. You're not here to feel happy. You're here to feel the heartbeat of God. And can I be honest with you? God is not happy today. Why? There's so many unsaved souls yet to be saved. How can He be happy? How can God smile? When there are people dying outside of this wall, and going to a Christless grave because we may not be doing enough to bring them in. Let's reflect on all of this. Father in heaven, 
Like Nehemiah, we hear your call. All the nations are in ruins because they do not have your wall of salvation. All the nations will go down the drain no matter how prosperous financially they may be because they do not have Jesus in their hearts. And just like Nehemiah, we call upon you, Lord, Lord, send us to rebuild the wall and restore the worship in the hearts of every man. Because you created man with the instinct to worship you. When you created Adam and Eve, he wanted them to worship you. Every human being born today has that instinct to worship God, but do not know which God. Please help us to point them to you, the one true God. We pray for missions. We intercede for missions. We respond to the call. We ask for partners to go with us and do the job. And after everything's been said and done, like Nehemiah, we can say, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions to those who are weak. This day is holy to the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. May we be able to say the same things to you after we have done to rebuild and restore worship in the hearts of all people. Thank you, Jesus. You are holy and just. So gracious to us How could we withhold Your praise You are faithful and wise So majestic, O Christ You are worthy to be proclaimed To the ends of the from the heavens, oh glory is yours. We exalt you, O oh Christ, as we carry your life to the ends of the earth, oh Lord. Shall we all rise? Chat like a kid. Let's sing this song as our prayer. You are holy and just, so gracious to us. How could we withhold your praise? You are faithful and wise, so majestic, O Christ. You are worthy to be proclaimed to the end. Of the earth, you are Lord. From the heavens, so glory is yours. We exalt you, O Christ, as we carry your life to the ends of the As we carry your life to the ends of the earth, oh Lord, to the ends of the earth, oh Lord, to the ends of the earth, oh Lord. 
us a cry of our hearts, O oh God. May your name be exalted in all the nations of the world. May your name be proclaimed. May your gospel be preached. And may people come to know you as their Lord and Savior. This we pray in the mighty, precious, sweetest name of all, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, uh, Pastor Eugene Howe, for sharing God's Word with us this morning. And thank you for reminding us of our mission. And we thank the Lord that uh, He is our joy and He is our strength for our mission to be accomplished. And for announcements, um, the audio system at the lobby is set up exclusively for persons with disability. And it is... It will only be activated when they are present. And we encourage everyone to join us in worship and ministry of God's Word at the meeting hall. And we encourage everyone to join us on our prayer meeting online every Tuesday. If you want to join a group, you may approach the group leaders or the elders or deacons. And for our online Friday fellowship, uh, we will have um, the Bible study on 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, facilitated by our sister Stephanie Reyes, and the topic is spiritual wisdom. And uh, next is um, on October 27, we have um, a special one church, uh, Beyond Grateful. And we encourage everyone to join us. And um, we encourage you also to register so that uh, there will be food allocation during this meeting. And you may contact Sister Leslie soon, Joan Tan, and Sister Ning for more details. And uh, we encourage everyone to join a care group and... Uh, our theme for this year is Better Together. So uh, if you still don't have a care group, you may approach Brother Joseph Wood Jr. Uh, for your care group. And uh, we encourage the parents to bring their children to Sunday school at 8.15. And uh, if you want to join, you still don't have a class, you may uh, contact Sister Ronette for further details. And next Lord's Day, we have uh, Pastor Jebo Bansuelo to share God's Word with us. And the topic is Grow in Godliness. Okay. And now uh, we welcome everyone to join us on our fellowship for, and coffee and snacks at the lobby downstairs. And may you get, have a great week ahead and God bless you all. <laughs>